Yeah, this is uh, not only for your Rex paper, for your nav paper, for your airline entrance papers, but as a pilot for understanding. It is like as usual when I say important because once you are professional, everything is important. You can't keep one topic important and second is not important. Eventually you'll find everything will be here. But this is like a practical kind of topic. Every day, day to day, we use. Trust me, you will find in your exams. And as a pilot, a lot of learning what you're going to cover. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, your captain speaking from flight deck. My name is Captain Surinder Singh. Welcome aboard the plane talking. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your journey. These are the instrument procedures, which all those charts, VOR, ILS, SAID, STAR, we keep reading a whole lot of things. But first, we will do instrument approach procedures. You have a visual approach in visual condition, you see the runway and you land. Correct? But when you don't see the runway, when you don't have adequate visual references available to land, that is the time when we do instrument approach. Now when you talk about instrument approach, it is divided in, we will start with first instrument approach, then we will go to the approach segments, go round segment, that is how we will progress. But to begin with, it is instrument approaches. Now instrument approach, they are divided into two categories or we can rather classify them in uh, two categories. One is called precision approach and one is non-precision approach. Precision, the word is originated from precise. Precise means accurate, very good. But when we say you can't say accurate, this is not accurate. There is a difference and the difference is when you say a precision approach, you have both guidance available for landing. Let us say when you are coming into land, you need alignment with the centre line. When you can visually see the runway, you can align. But if you do not have visual contact, you need guidance for lateral alignment or azimuthal alignment. Basically, whether you are left of the centre line or right of the centre line, that is called azimuth guidance or lateral guidance. That is one you need. And the second guidance you need is glide slope. That is vertical information, rather glide slope when you come for 3 degree landing. The two important. The third guidance which you need is what? Distance. How much is your distance from touchdown? In ILS, which we see earlier was marker beacon, now it is DMEs. Those who are not done ILS will come to that instrument landing system. You have guidance, lateral guidance, and you have vertical guidance. So, when you talk about precision approach, here you have both lateral or what we call it azimuthal and so when you do any instrument approach, the approach can be either PA precision approach or it can be NPA. So when you say precision which you said like more accurate or precise, you have both guidance available, you have lateral and vertical guidance, you want to land on the runway left, right, above, below and that is a glide slope information. Whereas, when you talk about non-precision approach, you have only, any guess, anybody? Wonderful. Only, we will see what is given in your notes later. Everything is given. Only lateral or azimuthal guidance available. That is the main difference between precision approach and non-precision approach. There is no other third type of approach. Either it is PA or non-precision. Now, the example of a precision approach is any guess? Again, pilots, ILS, what else? MLS, which is not in use, like yesterday when we were studying AIP, that time I showed you in AIP, 
MLS is not used in India. Remember that those who are doing regulation, I showed you MLS is, but yes, microwave landing system, commercially it was not a very successful equipment. Uh, it was taught, learnt, everything, but it died down its natural death. Two equipment really didn't survive. One was this MLS and the second was a Doppler nav equipment. Both these two things were invented, used for some time, but it died down its natural death. MLS, very expensive. The benefit were not there, those which are there, which they presume. Like we said, we don't study now MLS anymore. Any other guess? Now in race you have uh, GPS approaches. Some of you, you are yet to do Gagan. So in the precision approach, you don't need ILS, you don't need any ground-based equipment. With the augmentation system, with the GPS, up to CAT1 approach practically being done, which because you can have both vertical guidance and lateral guidance. So you have precision approaches or GPS aided. GPS augmented. Pure GPS, you can't use it. We augmentation system which we use. Or again in India, we don't use something is called PAR approaches. PAR is any guess? Precision approach radar. Many countries it is used. In India, it is used only in Air Force, military bases, PAR is there, precision approach where the controller sits with two screens and it is the glide slope, electronic glide slope is available to the controller. It is like a broadcast type of approach where he continues to guide you till your minima. Wait, I will show you. So that's how this kind of screen is there with the controller. Here the controller sees and he guides you and in Air Force Base is all and this is very accurate. In fact, controller gives you guidance till confirm landing. It is that accurate. It brings you till down to the runway. So the controller sees this is the glide slope which you are supposed to follow. So on his screen is there, one above the other, both screens is monitoring. This is the center line. This is the touchdown aiming point. In fact, runway 16 status okay. So that's what. You know, all these airports they have, military airport you will find on the side of the runway there are two radar antenna. One is going up and down, up and down is for the vertical guidance and left and right. This is called yes, yes, no, no antenna kind of thing. They keep doing this. So the controller actually can see. So the controller can see. We don't use it in Air Force, it's still used. You are above glide slope, increase your rate of descent. Now on glide slope, continue. He will keep looking at you. Okay, on glide slope, you are left of center line, turn right by two degrees. So it is like a broadcast continuously. In fact, uh, when the instructions are given, the controller tells you also. There is special training for the controller and for the pilot both. In civil aviation, it is not permitted. Yesterday, it was when we were seeing in the AIP, PAR approach is not permitted in India. But in Air Force, yes, we use where he said, okay, your wheel set should be locked, down and locked. Do not acknowledge any further uh, communi uh, communication, something like that. And then he gives like a broadcast on approach, on glide slope, tending to go below glide slope. Now they decrease your rate of descent, something like this. Basically, it is a continuous control, tending to go, for example, right of center line, turn left by two degree, coming on glide slope, on center line. It's a broadcast kind of control. So that's how the controller sees the different kind of screens. So he basically all the way can see his guidance. But this precision approach radar is, PR approaches are not permitted in India. Yeah, that's how these two antennas are. On the military airport, normally all those military bases, fighter bases, you'll find antenna like this. This actually, it moves like one is like this, yes, and one is like, no, yes, no antennas. On the side of runway, it is always there. Nowadays, technology is improved. So they have come phased area antenna, those who have done. Remember, when no side loops or something, so the better things have come. 
So when you talk about, like I said, instrument approach, you have both electronic and both electronic. So the controller has got electronic glide slope. When you do wireless, the control, you can see your glide slope localizer, both things are available. So that is called precision approach header. All these are PA. Non-precision, which only gives you alignment with the center line. And that is, okay, you have simple, you have studied VOR. You set your OBS, fly left, fly right, you follow and it will take you down to the <coughs> runway, center line basically. You just saw that, let's say if the, my landing direction is 271, I select 271, with VOR, fly left, fly right or you maintain just center and you will, but it will only give you lateral or azimuthal guidance. NDB approaches, earlier when there was nothing, they used to do NDB approaches. If your glide slope is not working, then you have localizer only approach. Localizer still give you, we will study those who are not done ILS, don't worry. You have like two guidance, lateral and vertical. Localizer gives you lateral and glide slope gives you vertical. So if you don't have glide slope, then it is a lo localizer only approach. It will give you the alignment. Electronic glide slope is not available. You have GPS approaches also, R nav approaches they are called, area nav, we will not go too much into this. Practically when you fly, you will see area navigation, R nav approaches or again SAR approach, surveillance radar approach where the controller gives you alignment, surveillance approach radar. This they are still done, practiced, okay. So controller has got its screen, he's got extended center line drawn, he gives you okay left off center line turn right by 2 degrees. So you can see it when you are coming, coming on glide slope, continue heading off whatever heading he wants. So that is only gives you the glide slope information. You have instrument approach, either it is a precision approach or it is a non-precision approach. Where you have electronic glide slope available, it is precision or it is non-precision approach. Clear on this? They chart for ILS, Chennai, whatever those normally what practically use. So this is just to tell you how a precision approach looks like. So you have some frequency given, localizer, final approach course 071. Any aircraft will come. They will come to a particular altitude, defined altitude. First they will align with the center line and then they will intercept glide slope and will descend. That's how this chart is. Your final approach track is 071. So first they come, they come on the localizer, left, right, center. So basically they are coming on the center line. Now you continue, you will descend to a particular altitude. In ILS we study more about this, what is this published altitude which you intercept. Now this, you intercept the glide slope and you commence your approach, you descend on this. All you need to do maintain is, you have two indicator, glide slope and localizer, left, right, above and below. So you both maintain left, right, center and above and below also centered. Now you continue. So now how long you will continue? From where you can see the runway and carry out a safe landing. You can take over visually and land. That's what is instrument landing procedure. So that altitude or height from where you can see the runway, okay, and then take over and carry out a safe landing. That altitude, any guess, is called decision height or decision altitude. Now decision altitude or decision height, again important for your regulation and for your nav also. Decision altitude or decision height is the lowest published altitude in a precision approach up to which, at which aircraft must initiate a missed approach procedure if no visual reference to land is established. Now when you say visual reference to land is not only runway, it could be lights, approach lights, threshold light, whatever. 
So those are the visual references. The lowest published altitude in a precision approach. So it is always given. This altitude is published. Any aircraft which is coming over this will come on this glide slope. You will come to the lowest decision height or decision altitude. From here, if you see the runway, you will continue. If you don't see the runway, you will initiate a missed approach procedure. Practically also, when you are flying, you set your minimums. So as you are coming into landing, the audios are there and the call out is also the pilot who is monitoring give a call, 100 above minimums, minimums. So now the moment you see minimums, if you have a visual, you say continue. Means the lowest published altitude, you can continue. And if you don't see, not visual, go around. Simple decision. That's why it is called decision altitude or height. The difference between altitude and height is elevation. And this is the lowest published altitude. Decision altitude or decision height. How much it is? 284 is the altitude and height is 244 and the difference between both is elevation. How much is the elevation then be? Can you see? So that's why the difference altitude is 284, height is 244. So any aircraft which is coming onto the approach will come to this in altitude or height, you see the runway, continue. If you don't, go wrong or carry out a missed approach procedure. So in a precision approach, we have decision altitude or height. We will see, read in the notes, but what it is the same thing what I am telling. It is a, a lowest published altitude for a precision approach at which aircraft must initiate a missed approach procedure if visual reference to land has not been established. Clear? So now coming to non-precision approach. In non-precision approach, so the starts are very easy. If by now half of the things you can read it yourself, transition altitude, transition level. So by the time we'll finish, you will finish, you will find it is fun. Now this is for VOR. VOR does not have any glide slope. So VOR, whatever runway is there and there is a final approach course is given. The final approach course is 255. Means this is your landing direction for the alignment with the runway for runway 25. Again, this is for the Chennai runway. Can you see this? This is your landing direction. So what you will do? You will select 255 on your OBS and just maintain center. You will be aligned. But then where do you descend? Somewhere you have to descend also. Yes, pilot. And in precision approach, for the non-precision approach, where you commence the descent to approach. Kayanush? Hello. Yes, sir. Where you commence your descent for the approach and non precision approach? Once uh, you are like, when you commence the descent? Yeah. Means, approach glide. In glide, in ILS, when you intercept the glide, you descend. Correct. Here you have aligned. Now, where you commence the descent? I am asking you, you are giving a question. I said, where do you commence this in? In this approach? Once you intercept the final approach course, you start descending. Negative. N, N, E, A, G. Negative. It is not that. Non-precision approach, it is not for a particular case. It is approach. It is not written this approach or that approach. The procedure remains the same. You commence a point is predetermined. That point is given at and referred as that is called final approach fix, FAF. So that is the point where you commence your descent. So let's say in this case, what you will do? First, you will come on the track wherever you are coming from. You will align with the 255. So you will find the 6.2 mile final approach fix is given. 
So every aircraft will come to 6.2 nautical mile and then you will commence your descent. And for the descent, how you commence is again, the parameters are given here. Where is the final approach? Can you see this? When you are coming into land, aircraft is coming to land here. You come to this point, at what altitude? Any aircraft which is doing non-position approach, you don't have vertical guidance. So you come to this final approach fix. It is given by this fancy star, which is referred as Maltese star, M-A-L-T-E-S-C, Maltese star. And this is referred as final approach fix. So there you commence descent. So every aircraft will do this. Now how you will descend? You will descend if you will find it is given. Your ground speed and gradient. Those who have done descent, we have seen for 3 degree light slope, your rate of descent is multiplied by 5, which is 5 percent descent gradient. So you will find it is roughly uh, 14 into 5 is 700, correct. So it is given 743. 160 into uh, 5, 800. So that is what it is given roughly, 849. 180. So 120 is 600, so it is given 637. That rough, that, remember we did those who are done descent. So those, even if you are not done, what rate of descent you will maintain? At what speed you are making in an approach? This parameter is given here. Even if you have, don't know anything, if you are mathematically very bad or something, you don't know how to calculate it, it is given. Whatever in between, you can interpolate. When you say interpolate means, Let's say if it is 130, it has to be between 600 and 700, roughly about 650, correct? Similarly, in between also you can interpolate it. So what rate of descent you are supposed to maintain, it is given here. And you will find at every mile, there is a cross check. So when you commence your descent, let's say you come, final approach fix, from here you commence your descent. As you commence your descent, you will find 6.2 miles, so you practically when you do this approach, this you call out also, 6.2, 1800 feet. 6 miles, again when you cross check, 1740 feet. Then again you will cross check at, so it is your flying skill. They have given you the parameters. These are the parameters which will ensure that you are flying your glide slope. At 4 miles, 1120. Hanji, Kalehage. So there is no glide slope, it is purely your flying skill and the parameters what they have given you. Every mile you check, okay, reaching 5 mile 1430. So if you are higher, you say 30 feet higher, 40 feet lower. That is how these call outs are. And continue down till minimum of MD A. Now this is for the precision approach. Now in precision approach, what will happen? Whether it is a Cessna, or it is a big, any aircraft, irrespective, doesn't matter. If they are doing the approach, what they will do? They will come here, they will intercept the glide slope, and then every aircraft will follow this physical line and will reach at a particular point with respect to the runway. Where you see the runway, you land. If you don't see the runway, so every aircraft will eventually, at 280 feet, where it will be? It will be here. Is there any doubt? Is a pilot very important learning here? When you are doing a precision approach, you are flying a, this glide slope, electronic glide slope. Every aircraft will come here. Now from here, depending upon your minima, in ILS we study CAT 1, CAT 2, how low you can come. So from wherever this lowest is there, every aircraft will come here. Now from here you can carry out a safe landing. If you don't, you will carry out a missed approach procedure. Whereas a non-precision approach, it may not happen so. Because there is no line drawn, glide slope. Here you have this physical line, glide slope, correct? Every aircraft is coming on this line whole day. You will be on this line and on in time and space, you will reach at this point. On that point, you will come. If you are following the correct glide slope and uh, on center line. Whereas in non-precision approach, non-precision approach, every aircraft is coming till final approach fix. There is no doubt in this, correct, we will come to final approach fix, wherever this final approach fix is given on the approach, we will come here. Now after this what? Let us say if I give you 810 is a minimum descent altitude, 
or minimum decision altitude. Let's say I give here also. Now every aircraft may not reach a point. You have to descend to what? 810 feet? Now depending upon your flying skill, one aircraft may reach here, one may reach here. Because there is no one electronic, it is purely your flying skill. You have been given guidance that this rate of descent should be maintained to maintain 3 degree descent of uh, 3 degree glide angle of 5 percent descent gradient. But the skill may vary. So what will happen? Let's say if aircraft come descent 810, no contact, go round. Again he comes, again will he ever able to land? Saradin Lagarega, he won't be able to land because it is not a line. It is not an electronic glide slope. It is a descent path. Now, if I tell you that 810, let's make it a decision height or altitude. Now, every aircraft may not reach that physical point what is there in the precision approach in the glide slope. Glide slope, you are following a particular line. Here, it depends. A pilot who is not very accurate may reach 810 here. Somebody will reach here. Somebody will reach here. Somebody will reach here. It is purely a flying skill, there is no physical line drawn. Every time aircraft comes here, descent to 810, no contact, go round. Again he comes, no contact, go round. That does not make a sense. Now to cater for all this non-precision approach, what they give is a minimum descent altitude, MDA, the lowest published altitude in a non precision approach which is 800 below which descent may not be continued if the visual reference to land is not established. There is a reason for this because let us see if I am descending here even if the aircraft comes here or here or here what they are descending to 810 feet yes it could be anywhere even taking all your flying inaccuracies could be anything, 810 all will level out, but you are not initiating a missed approach procedure. So all these aircraft can maintain this and continue looking for the runway to a point from where visual, visually you can acquire the runway or establish visual required reference whether runway light, approach light, whatever lights are there and you can carry out a safe landing. That is the logic of this. Now they have defined this line, can you understanding? Now, wherever you are descending, you will finally come to this point, but how long you will continue? Somewhere you have to take a decision that now you cannot continue with the safe approach. So here in a non precision approach, you have something called missed approach point MAP. Now any aircraft, wherever it is descended, they will level out at 800, but even if the aircraft is, all will fly like this, wherever. Now they will continue, wherever you see the runway you can land. If you do not see runway, how long you will continue till this point, missed approach point and then you will have, now it makes a systematic thing. In exam you have a question, in any of the exam when you think of in a non position approach, a missed approach should be carried out MDA, DA or some where MEP, that is how these choices are there. So, in a non precision approach, your missed approach to be carried out, you will see this question. Should be carried out where? MDA. MDA? MDA. 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 MDA is a minimum descent altitude. Sabse aage ke. MDA aircraft can reach anywhere depending upon your flying skill. So, you are not, when you touch here, you are not going, you maintain 810 till the point from wherever you see the runway you land, but how long you will continue till? Missed approach point, MAP. So in a non-position approach, a missed approach point is MAP. You should, you are supposed to carry out a missed approach procedure at MAP. Read the definition of MAP, missed approach point in your notes. Can you see this imaginary 3 degree dotted which is shown? The chart is there in your question bank later on you can see it. This is an imaginary line, correct. So wherever you are leveled out, you will level out at 810 feet. You cannot descend below this, but you do not need to initiate a 
missed approach. You will continue at that MDA. If you see the runway from wherever you can carry out a safe landing line. If you can't, the moment you are reaching over VOR, it is missed approach. You have to carry out from here. Any doubt on this? Coming back to the original thing which we started with this. So, in this case, you have non position approach, you have MDA or MDH. This is decision, this is descent. Why it is not given in books, any of the books, I have explained you. There is none of the aviation book who talk about this, what I have told you, why it is designed like this. There is a reason for this. Because there is no a line, it is not a physical line, every aircraft may not reach there. But if you level out at 810 feet, then yes, every aircraft will follow the same path at 810 feet. So, where you carry out missed approach? So, in this case, your missed approach is carried out at in position approach, your missed approach is at DA or DH. Whereas, in non position approach, you will definitely find this question at MAP. So, there you carry out a missed approach. That is the difference between these two approaches. Clear? Any doubt on this? So, that is the main difference between position and non position approach. In the next class, we will see various approach segments. You have arrival segment, the total five arrival segment, initial approach segment, intermediate approach segment, final approach segment and missed approach segment. Till then, stay tuned. This is your captain, Surinder Singh.